<laughs> so, okay, let's get started. It says a spring has a length of uh, 2 point, 0.25 meters. So it has, uh, what's important for me is that some length L1 when a mass M1 hangs from it and a length of L2 when a, a mass M2 hangs from it. So I think a reasonable thing to assume is that both L1 and L2 includes the equilibrium length of the spring. So it's really better to express this as L1 is equal to L0 plus some extension of the spring consistent with the Hooke's law. And L2 is similarly L equilibrium length plus delta L2, which is the extension consistent with uh, application of the Hooke's law. Then when you imagine this uh, situation here where a mass is hanging from a spring, then you can imagine the free body diagram for this. The gravity is pulling down with the force mg. The spring force is pulling up with the force spring force, which should be given by the Hooke's law k spring constant times the extension of the spring. So uh, we can say, all right, so this is the equation that the hint is getting you to set up. So starting out with this expression for the length of the spring, now I can use Hooke's law to put in the in additional information that we know, the mass of the mass that hangs and all this stuff. So let me write that down. So um, let's see. I feel like the equation I should write down is the Newton's second law equation that comes from this free body diagram. So I have, should have two equations from the two situations. The first equation is to say net force. That would be the upward spring force K um, delta L1 uh, minus the downward force, which is M1G is equal to zero. And the second equation is the exact same equation except for the other set of numbers. K delta L2 minus M2G is equal to zero. And I guess, um, Hmm. Do I have too many equations? No, 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 I don't have too many equations. So I, I think this is actually a good point to kind of pause up for a bit and count the number of unknowns and equations. Um, now, a lot of you might want to go straight into um, solving this for some of the unknowns, substituting, which is fine. This is, I think, a simple enough question that doing it that way won't necessarily lead you wrong. But what I'm trying to avoid here is um, wasting time trying to solve for this system when I don't know for a fact that I have enough information to solve it. So what I'm treating this as, it, it, uh, what I'm treating this as is a system of four equations. I have equations one, two, three, four. They're independent of each other, all that. So what I hope is there are only four unknowns. So there's the uh, K spring constant that's unknown. We need to solve for it. And the extension delta L1 is technically an unknown. I know L1 and L2, but that's actually a combination of two unknowns. Uh, each of them are combination of two unknowns the equilibrium length, and I already highlight delta L1, so let me not highlight it again. So delta L2 is another unknown. And I think everything else is known or already counted for. Um, the L0, um, masses are given. Um, so yeah, I have four equations, four unknowns, so I should be able to solve for it. Now, the thing to do is you want to do this um, systematically. 
meaning you want to look at what's the uh, last uh, set of quantities that you want to know, K, and the equilibrium length L, which I'm using L not to label. And you want to make sure that those are the very last things you solve for. Um, that'll save you some work later. So I guess the very first thing I'm going to get rid of are the delta L1s, those delta L1 and delta L2. Those are kind of um, new set of unknowns that I've come up with to describe the information given in the system. So it's sort of my own unknown, it's the intermediate unknown, nobody wants them except for me, so I want to get rid of them. So, I think the thing to do is to solve equations three and four for those unknowns, delta L1 and delta L2, plug it into equations one and two, that'll give me system of two equations of, uh, in terms of two unknowns that we eventually want to know and we can go from there. So solving each of these for delta, L, delta Ls, I get uh, delta L1, is equal to M1G over K. And solving this for delta L2, I get delta L2 is equal to M2G over K. Um, all right, let me plug that in into one. So plugging into one, I get here L1 is equal to L0, which is still an unknown, plus M1G over K. And plugging this into 2, I get L2 is equal to L0 plus M2G over K. Um, I guess. Um, Let's see, what do I not do here? Uh, I could do linear combination, but um, I don't want to, <laughs> let's see. Um, I think the straightforward thing to do is solve one of them for L naught, the equilibrium length, and plug that into the other thing that'll let me solve for K. So let me solve this for equilibrium length. Equilibrium length is equal to L1 minus M1G over K. Plug that into the remaining equation. That'll get me L2 is equal to all of this. Um, L1 minus M1G over K plus M2G over K. Um, Let's collect the like terms. Trying to minimize algebra here. So uh, let me move L1 over and uh, collect the like terms. Then I get L2 minus L1 is equal to um, M2G minus M1G over K. Thankfully, the denominators are the same. Um, and I guess it's a matter of just uh, moving things over. Move K to the left-hand side, move left-hand side over to the right-hand side, then you end up with K is equal to M2G minus M1G over L2 minus L1. Let's do a little sanity check. So let's see, M2 is bigger than M1, so the denominator, uh, numerator is positive. L2 is bigger than L1, so denominator is positive. So I'm gonna get a positive answer and that should give me the value of K in SI units. And once I have what K is, I'll leave plugging in numbers to you. Uh, what you can do is you can basically plug into any of these expressions that have K in it. Uh, this would probably be the easiest one since uh, that's the one where I first solve for L naught in terms of K. So once I have numerical value of K, you plug that in here, um, work out the numbers that will give you the unloaded length of the spring. Make sure you have it in centimeters. You're done. 
So uh, this uh, exemplifies a lot of problem solving in physics. Uh, so this uh, combined some aspects of problem solving that you have seen before, namely the standard strategy, but rather than simply labeling this as a standard strategy question, it uses a standard strategy as one, uh, one substantial piece of the overall problem solving. And really what a lot of physics problem solving will look like is exactly what we did here, which is we set up a system of equations that represents all the information we know about the system. And then we, once we have that and we are satisfied all the necessary information is there, then we solve it out to get a, a solution in terms of, um, to get a solution for the unknowns. That's a kind of a standard format for a lot of physics problem solving. And it's a, the quicker you get used to it, the better you will get at physics problem solving. Because frankly, the most common mistake students make in introductory physics is that um, you try to jump to the solution too quickly without making sure that you had all the information. 